Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here. Over the weekend, we received some big news in regards to the future of Ultimate General American Revolution, so I figured I would make a video discussing the future of American General Revolution and what we can expect in the near future, possibly the far future. I'm going to go back to January 19th of 2024. This is about five days before the most recent patch. This post is actually not about the current patch that we're playing on, but it's it's about the future, like the Philadelphia campaign, and basically, I, I think, what equates to 1778 and beyond. So on January 19th of this year, Sterner gave us a post that said he would like to share some news about game development. He says, we finished the next two stages, but they require testing because we added new mechanics that will be required in further stages. And what this means, uh, from what I understand, is that they finished the New York stage, and they think they finished the Philadelphia stage. But obviously, both stages, it's early access, there's always going to be things that come up, and they need to fix it. Well, five days later, we got the New York stage, and, you know, for the most part, I would say the New York stage is complete, except for things that you would expect in early access, and... There have been many reports, especially by me, um, <laughs> looking through, you can just look through my most recent videos once it hits, uh, August 12th of, I think it's 1776. Just kind of like the optimization of the game is, I don't want to say it's really bad, but it's significantly worse than it was earlier in the game. And there's, there's a lot of people that have come out and reaffirmed this, supported this, things like uh, disappearing units. You can see that in some of my videos where I have a cavalry unit that chases down a unit and that unit like co goes in and out of existence. I'm not just talking that my unit fails to spot it, but melee completely stops happening. And th there's just like little things like that. The hilly frontier maps, uh, they're they're not optimized well. It's, it's kind of a pain in the butt when you have elevation on the map in this game, as your cursor doesn't really match where your uh, where the final click is. It, it's off by a significant margin. Um, and then just I've noticed frame rate, uh, like s some major lags in frame rate while playing in the frontier and in New York. And you can see my specs on my channel. I put it in the about section. I have a top-of-the-line PC. Uh, like, I have 4.5 gigahertz on my uh, hard drive. I have a 4080 GTX. Uh, like, I, I have a fairly, like, I have a 99 percentile PC. The only people that have a better PC than me have, like, the 4090 and some other specs here and there that make their PCs better. But my PC is better than 99% of the other players out there, and I'm I'm definitely seeing things where I'm like, that's a lag spike. And I, I feel like when you have a high-end PC, you're a little bit more in tune with these lag spikes because you run 60 FPS, 120 FPS, um, e even higher. I you generally, if I can, I cap it at like 120 because there's to me there's no appreciable knowledge or difference between like 120 and 180, at least to my eyes. But uh, when when you have a higher end PC, you notice when it drops below sixty. Whereas when I used to have a like middle to low tier PC, it's like it, you sat between twenty and forty frames per second in most games, anyway. So like you didn't really notice it until it dropped below twenty. Whereas in this game, I notice it very very much when the game lags down. So. Just to give you some preface there of when they say the next two stages, New York, they put the patch out for that. Philadelphia looks like is going to be the next patch. They have to work on stabilization. But with all early access, you obviously always work on optimization. So don't take that as a negative for me as long as the as long as the devs, you know, understand that there's optimization that needs to be had, which it sounds like they do, but it's also upon us players to say, like, hey, the optimization isn't here on these type of maps. It's there from the beginning of the game up until August 12, 1776, but once August 12, 1776 hits, 
when you get into the New York map, you get into the frontier, the optimization takes in a uh, like a noticeable dive for the bad. And that's not saying that's a bad thing in early access. It's only bad if the devs don't acknowledge it and don't fix it in the future. So just want to get that out of the way. Continuing on with this post, um, he makes about 11 points based on what I'm looking at on the Discord post. And one of them is, um, the first one is foreign armies and their activities depending on your relation with them. So from what I understand, foreign armies such as like the Spanish and the French will be in the game. They almost look like they're going to be independent groups. I don't know if you'll be able to hire them as mercenaries. It's it's shown that the you can do that with the Native Americans, but I'm not sure about the French or the Spanish. I'll show you a video later that shows some Spanish troops on the map. Kind of cool, but um, the it looks like the, in the Philadelphia campaign or maybe in the 1778 to like end of war campaign, we should have foreign armies and uh, their activities depend on, you know, your relationship with them. So if you have good relations with the Spanish and the French, theoretically, they will help you out on the battlefield, at least. That's how I interpret that. The next point is about natives or villages and their activities. Exact same thing. I do know that you will be able to recruit Native Americans. And then point number three, European and local wars affecting the situation in America. I don't exactly understand what this means yet. Maybe like the, the French and the Spanish fleets will stop invasion forces from invading as frequently, or maybe there is a chance that the invasion force gets intercepted, or the England says like, hey, the, the French are blockading us here, maybe we won't send an invasion force. That would be like more along the historical path to me. I know one of the larger battles late in the war is actually the Siege of Gibraltar, which doesn't happen in North America. It happens in Gibraltar, which is the like southern a little peninsula tip of Spain right above Morocco. Um, and it's called the Strait of Gibraltar there. And the English owned Gibraltar. Um, I don't know if they still do, but they, they owned it for many, many years through World War II. It's always been a major emphasis of British naval dominance. So it would be interesting if like good relations with the French and the Spanish caused things like that. What would be cool in the long run is I know we will eventually have a map of the United Kingdom it would also be cool if we had like maybe one of France and Spain um, and like you can actually do the Siege of Gibraltar. That would be that would be very interesting and cool to me. So point four kind of leading off of that is foreign fleet and their activities. So hopefully we will see French ships and Spanish ships on the map. Hopefully they like if you have good relations with them, they will engage the British. I'm assuming if you have terrible relations with them that maybe they'll pirate your ships and your your merchant vessels. That's probably how that would go because obviously like there needs to be a checks and balance it can't just be all good um if you piss off the french and the spanish there should be negatives for doing so point five was more deeper diplomacy depending on your decisions to support any faction i mean i i just hope so uh keep in mind it's always early access i feel like diplomacy has not been um anywhere near the top of their list for a while which is fine get the core mechanics of the game down but it's nice to know that diplomacy is something they'll be working on because in my eyes, there's no such thing as diplomacy right now. It's like, do you want to trade some civilian muskets with the natives? Uh, sure. Do you want to take copper from them? Like, yes or no. That That's basically the diplomacy at the moment. So it'd be really cool if you could initiate trades with them. If you could, um, you know, just do more diplomatic measures it would be really cool if you could set targets of opportunity for the enemy um, or for your allies against the enemy if if they are indeed your military allies total war has a thing like that at least i know they do in rome i'm i can't remember if like the total war warhammer series or the newer ones they have like that but you could always set sort of like targets for your alliance members to attack and i think that would be really cool if this game could implement something like that too also talks about global map AI improvements, supporting new mechanics. You know, always appreciate appreciated when the AI gets some sort of buff or um, more intelligence based on what is going on in the map overall. So I always like to see that every single patch so far, they're like, yes, we're we're working on the global AI. We're working on the tactical AI. Those things are appreciated. Um, seven was troop transports. 
You need to produce transports for transferring units by sea. Britain will get armed Indiamen, so it'll be much harder to destroy British troops at sea. So they've like kind of integrated this already into the New York campaign. You can see that the British uh, move with uh, the Indiamen merchant vessels. You can move troops, uh, American troops, of VSC. Um, I've never tried it. It's something that I should try and figure out how it works, but I imagine this is more pertinent to, say, like the British, the French, and the Spanish, where, you know, they're, they're a whole ocean across and need to move their troops across large amounts of sea, whereas the Americans would be like, let's move from, I don't know, Boston to Philadelphia or, you know, somewhere further south. That's that's kind of my thought process there. So I I, I feel like at least 50% of this point has already been implemented, if not all 100%. I just can't vouch for the American side of it. I just know you can move troops. I don't know if you actually have to make transport ships for that. Other things like multiple improvements in balance, Panda Kraut, creator of uh, Ultimate General Civil War, I think that's supposed to be mods, has joined us and will work with balance. If you don't know, Panda Kraut is one of the creators of the GMP mod for American General Civil War. It's uh, it's pretty much like the only mod out there. There's another mod that he also like helped create or is the creator of, which is the UI mod. So basically the only mods for the Civil War game he's involved in. He's really good at doing like delving into numbers, um, statistics, and like AI performance and tweaking those and streamlining numbers. He's He's been working on a lot of things. I, I've mentioned to him, like, hey, this unit model doesn't match the description of it on the map. Um, one example is the very beginning. I can't remember if it's like the 95th Connecticut or something. One of the militia units you get, when you get it, you look at the unit and they're basically like the unique fusiliers and they should be militia. So it's like, okay, working on that, fixing it. In New York, I, I said, hey, all of the militia in lower New York are the old militia models and like gave him the list of the the militia units like Hempstead militia and Newtown militia and um like New York militia they're they're all the old militia models so he goes okay I'll I'll work on that for the next patch so he's kind of doing a lot of the the dirty work that needs to be done in these games that debt like takes away from developers completing their end goal but they are things that kind of separate a a good game from a great game so i think this was a really really smart move on the developers end to do that number nine was improvements in global map mini map now it shows generals and places where the battles appeared i would like some more improvement on this this is a good step but i would like more i have a hard time noticing the battles on the map the generals and the fleets i notice but the battles i i, I find it very hard for me to notice it this might be something where the devs need to look at UI scaling because I'm running on a 34 by uh, 1440 monitor. And so if you look at my screen, look at this battle that I have up here, you can see that things are smaller than they would be if you're on like a 19, was it 1920 by 1080p, which is the standard monitor. Um, but I, I'm always a proponent of UI scaling, so maybe UI scaling would help that. I just think like, they, they could probably do something more for the battles on the minimap too. Point number 10 here was we work to increase size of battle maps. They will become bigger and have more options for tactics. I feel like this is huge. Um, the, the battle maps are too small for the big maps. Uh, on small little engagements, they're the perfect size, but for huge engagements, I've really struggled. I've really tried to like do these 20 to 30,000 man battles on the maps and it just doesn't work at the current map scale. And then 11 is always many fixes are waiting to be released. Um, Sterner usually has a good sense of humor, so I'm surprised he also didn't put like many fixes are waiting to be released and many more bugs will probably happen because of this too, which is just how designing a game works. As you put more mechanics into a game, you increase the overall amount of bugs that you have to fix. It's just like this vicious cycle. But I thought... That was uh that was really cool and um there, there's a little video here to give you an idea of what they showed off earlier and it's already implemented to the game of the mini map just show off this little video here and you can kind of see what I mean by like the battles are I, I I don't I think the battles could be better 
The stars represent generals. It doesn't show the fleets in here, but the fleets are this like big red symbol with an anchor, and they're they're very obvious. The battle is this like small little glowing red blip, I think. And then for the fleet battles, I think it's a blue blip. I think if they just like made it stupid clear and obvious on the map, like put um two swords clashing or whatever is you know the standard for a battle, I, I think that would help out a bunch. One day later, Sterner also addressed some more stuff. He said, some information about foreign and local wars and how you can benefit. When, for example, the Iroquois tribe is at war with the British, you can send them weapons. This will increase the chance of their victory in any battle. And having lost this battle, the British will be forced to send some troops to reinforce them, thereby reducing their number against you. For example, if the French defeated the British fleet in the West Indies, the British would be forced to ease the blockade by sending ships to defend the West Indies. But if the war starts against you, opponents can either seize your territories or carry out devastating raids in the case of the Indians. So I think this goes back to like diplomacy. Also, this, this sums up a lot of different points on having other factions in the game as it should be. It shouldn't be all bonus. It shouldn't be all negative. And I really like the concept, like if you're doing really bad in the war, that the Iroquois are like, you know what? Why don't we, uh, you know, take your lands while we can kind of thing. Um. I do like the concept that I could give them weapons. Hopefully that's more of player agency as opposed to like an event comes up and says like, hey, would you give 500 weapons? It'd be really cool if there was a thing where it's like the Iroquois need X amount of guns and you you could like slowly fill out that um, with excess guns that you have. Most people late in the game will have enough guns to do so, but you know, if you're struggling, um, then, then maybe that's a nice thing for you. I, I do want to show off some art. This was a little controversial, this art that they showed for the Native Americans. This was one of their concepts for the Native Americans. And from what I understand from all the backlash here, this is not an era appropriate model for a Native American or a or a area appropriate model. This is more of like a 1800s Plains Native American as opposed to a 1700s eastern tribe so I, I think the devs did hear that quite loud though because some of the later pictures of the native americans they they do look a lot better um that being said i'm going to show off a video of some native american uh, units here and this one also got a little bit of um like backlash because the native americans here are using bow and arrows, and really the Native Americans should probably be using muskets. It also looks like when they charge in, they like absolutely decimate the British here. There's 70, well, maybe not. Uh, maybe people are blowing this out of proportion. Only a couple British died here, but the point being, um, really, we should have Native Americans with muskets. You should be able to equip them that way. So I, I hope that this is just like an early thing and that you have the ability to equip the Native Americans with muskets here, but it's always early access, things can always change. I love that they're, you know, introducing more than just the Americans and, and the British, that they have the Spanish, the French, and the Native Americans. I think that's that's really cool. So on the 16th of February, Cerner gave us an update just saying we're working on things, Philadelphia campaign, Indian villages, units and related mechanics, French and Spanish units related mechanics, a quest generator, that really piqued my interest. Global map AI, we always talk about making the AI better. Balance and events and bug fixes working with our feedback. That is a huge line to me. I can't stress how important it is when devs listen to feedback. There are so many game designers out there that I feel they just do not listen to the, like a, a group of feedback. Um, like I'm just going to call it out. Gates of Hell devs. Uh, there's a reason why I don't play that game anymore on the channel, and it just feels like anything you bring up to them, they, like, aggressively shut you down on their Discord, and it's just not very fun as a YouTuber to, you know, promote a game product from a developer that is kind of rude to their customer base. Um, like, I brought up UI scaling, and basically the comment was, like, I play on the same monitor, UI sc scaling is fine. And when I showed them screenshots of like, this is not fine, and then other people chirped up that it's not fine, uh, it just, I, I just get like bad vibes from certain devs, and 
I, I don't mean to like bash on that game. That game's a fun game, but um, there, there are pl I just wanted to use an example of there are plenty of devs out there that are like hostile to criticism, don't take criticism well, or just flat out don't listen to any criticism at all and don't make any changes. That being said, a dev should have a goal. A dev should have a vision and you can't listen to all criticism or you have to say like, that would be great. We don't have the resources to do that. That's a fine argument. Like these are small developers. If you don't have the resources to do it, you don't have the resources to do it. There's many things I wish would be implemented in this game. And I step back and go like, but it'll never happen because that's a ridiculous amount of resources to you know, like put into the game to create that mechanic and it's a different vision than what the devs have so there's a lot of times where i say like i wish they had this in the game i also realize it'll probably never be in the game because of the time and effort it'll take so i, I just want to put that out there i love that these devs are listening and you can see it in their patches and the things that they do also he mentions uh, large tactical maps we almost finished the extension of tactical battle maps and i want to show a picture here of what their proposed difference is in the tactical map and it is huge so you can see here present area that is like what the current tactical map would be upcoming area now i do also hope that they i i don't know if this will work for every single battle because like the small little fort battles we don't need a massive map but when we're dealing with these huge invasions like even early on boston those maps are too small if you want to do like a 6,000 versus 6,000 battle at Boston. But when you get to New York, if you wanted to do a 12,000 versus 12,000 battle at New York, you just can't right now. It's so awful. It's like I tried to make an episode to end my campaign that was like the battle at New York and tried to make it this nearly 30,000 man battle. It just didn't work and I, I got so frustrated. That's why there was a little you know, delay in the amount of videos I put out because I spent so much time and effort trying to make this amazing, cool battle happen. And it just, because of the size of the map, it just couldn't work at all. Oh, a week later on the 23rd, Sterner's been pretty good about giving lately, kind of like weekly, bi-weekly updates. He usually does it on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So shout out to Sterner for giving us updates. Sometimes with devs, you're like, you sit there, you're like, Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. And you, you just, uh, you just struggle trying to get anything out of a dev. And that's when you start to lose confidence. I would say like, even if uh, sometimes Sterner's just like, Hey, we're continuing to work on the Philadelphia campaign. Perfect. That's all the communication we know we need to know you're still working on the game. So on the 23rd of February, he says, Here's a weekly report, added mechanics for mercenaries from Indian tribes. You can hire Indian units in the border region if you had good relations with them. And added a flea button for naval battles in the global map, further global AI improves, and then a lot of work on game content. So I'm going to show you a little battle here, or little thing here. It's nothing too exciting, except it's exciting. And it's just showing that there is a flea button for the naval battle. Now it's not perfect. It looks like in this battle you have a 36% chance to flee. From what Pandacrat was saying, it'll probably be based off of like speed of ships um, and things like that. So if you see here, it's like an 18 gun ship versus an 18 and a 12. Uh, that should be a low chance to flee. But if it's a, if it's like a fast fifth rate against a slow cumbersome first rate, I hope that fifth rate has a really high chance to flee the battle. But it, it's such a small thing, but it's such a big thing. And I hope you guys understand what I mean by that. Like... Sometimes in games like this, it's the small things that really make the game. You could have this cool core concept, but if you don't have these little quality of life things where it's like, I don't, I want my fleet to flee. How can I flee? And there's no flee mechanic that can really break the game for players. And it, it, it it's, it's a huge improvement for the naval side of this game. A few more posts and we'll get out of here. I understand this uh, video is going a little bit longer than I wanted on the 2nd of March. Sterner stated, uh, we work hard to finish all things for the next patch. Unfortunately, there's a huge amount of changes, new features. We need time to stabilize them. You can see new global map size in the attached video. So here's a video of basically like what the map will be like. I think we'll have another video discussing things like this just to keep this video a little bit shorter. 
I have, I like it, but I also have concerns about this. But as I said, we'll we'll talk about this in a different video. Uh, foreign relation mechanics started to work. If you had bad relations with the natives or European nations, they will attack you. Perfect. Love that. But if you have good relationships, they can support you with troops and goods. Foreign relation um, mercenary mechanics started to work too, and you'll be able to hire natives. Our testers think that they are very powerful. So that's good and bad. We almost finished new maps and extending their size. Please compare the difference between old size and new ones. The size of the map will be dynamic and dependent on how many units participating in the battle to avoid situations when you have to seek enemies. So we'll go back to this picture of the map. He just explained part of the concern I had earlier of like a small fort battle. I don't need a giant map, but on a giant battle, I need a giant map. So I love, 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 love that they are making this dynamic. Also, just show off the French here. They look beautiful. This is this is a French fleet. It looks like it's in battle with the British because there is a battle indicator there. And you can see the French names. You can see there's 112, 212 gun ships, 68 gun ships and others. And then the French transport vessels look to be 30 gun ships. And you can see I love how the French look here. There is a unit in game that is, uh, I think, dressed in the French uniform. The... The French Revolutionary uniforms, I, I really love how they look before they go into their like darker blue and very white and Napoleonic era uniforms. I kind of like the pre-revolution. Um, there's a lot more powder blue in there. Also a picture here. Um, this I it said I would bring this up before. Uh, although actually this is this is good news. Maybe I didn't look at this picture as much as before. This is how you recruit the Native Americans, but I do notice here. Um, so tension with Iroquois is more than 40%, tension with Iroquois is more than 20%. So you need to get your tension down to get the better units. So it looks like there's a default unit, which is four bow companies. It's 23 rep, 3,300 gold. That feels expensive, but I don't know, maybe later in the game that's not expensive. And then this one has four muskets. It's grayed out, so it's a little bit more difficult to see. It's 34 rep. 4,400 gold. I like that a lot. I like that they have muskets. So, um, I like that there's a choice there. I don't know. There's a lot of people saying that they just shouldn't have bows, but I also understand it's a sandbox game. So, you know, whatever on that. And then here, this one's interesting. This is a cavalry unit. It has three cavalry, but I, I think you can see there there's a bow right there. I wonder if they're foot bow guys or mounted bow guys. I'm not sure. But it's 34 reputation, 6,600 gold. And it looks like there are two star unit, one star, and one star unit. So this is really reassuring. I like this concept. I obviously it'll probably need to be balanced and worked on throughout time, but really, really like that. Two more posts and we are out of here. Uh this one's big. So this was on the 10th of March. It says we work hard to prepare everything for the next patch. We finished all maps, but they require additional setup and testing. Great news. We continue to work on improvement of the performance of the game, obviously. We fix your reports and make a balance. Love that. We implement multinational tactical battles when different nations can get into one battle, and this will require us to do additional work in game logic and AI to ensure that these troops fight successfully. This is crazy cool. It's also crazy scary because you're relying on the AI. Um, but here's a video of this, and it's pretty cool. It shows, like, here's your American forces. You see the British. And this yellow here are the Spanish. And you can see the Spanish flags there. And you can see Spanish cavalry. And you can see a commander named Galvez. Now, I think these Spanish are about to get destroyed. Because you can see how over here with more men. Is that an anchor symbol? Are these, like, marines? I never noticed that before. But there is an anchor symbol um, in the British. If you, like, an anchor and a um in a musket i don't know if anybody knows if that's in the game already it's right next to the charging 70 man cav unit it's like right behind it so that's that's pretty cool but um you know this goes back to we need deployment zones because the spanish are deployed terribly their their cannon is out in front their infantry are behind their uh, their cav are there um but this, this is cool it's uh, this this is probably going to be a pain point for a while though so I would imagine this is something that's going to need a lot of testing and a lot of balancing. Also, they said we're almost ready to release the patch to our alpha testers, and if they find that game in good, it, the, the game is in good enough condition, then the patch will come public. So, 
cool there. Also, uh, a week later, uh, 17th of March, he Sterner says, Hello, Generals. I love that he always starts with Hello, Generals. We have completed the development of maps and features for the next patch. The patch is currently in the stabilization stage and release the alpha testers. We have a lot of changes and it may take time to stabilize. The good news is that we've almost finished the content for the American campaign. If, stabiliz if stabilization takes longer, the patch may include a full U.S. campaign. Let that sink in. The patch may include a full U.S. campaign. So they're nearly done with a full U.S. campaign. That's like bittersweet to me because part of me is like, oh, so that's, that's it for the game. Um, but at the same time, until I get the entire game in my hands, I can't really make too much uh, noise about it. But it's also exciting that, you know, the campaign is nearly done, quote unquote, in terms of content. And then they can spend all this time hashing out balancing, hashing out mechanics, fixing things, or even, you know, like maybe adding and removing things. Like the first Battle of Lexington and Concord is really outdated. It, it feels like it was made for a completely different game because the models aren't the models used in the game, at least for the Americans. So that's really cool. Also gives you hope that, you know, this will come out to Steam actually during the summer of 2024 my fear was the pacing that they were going through that it wouldn't come out to steam until like 2025 but if they're this close to the full u.s campaign their goal was for steam to have the full u.s campaign and release an early access um and i think that's a smart idea because steam can be very volatile at least steam user reviews and a game can die in early access because people don't understand the concept of early access um so so having the game as like polished as possible while still going into early access in steam seems really important and this gives me a lot of hope um i think we'll have a follow-up video on some of these uh, where i can talk like how what i really think about them so i, I think this is a good stopping point for this video and you know, let, let me know, do you guys want me to talk about certain things that come up here, um, especially like the Native Americans, the multinational units, things like that. I think I should put a video out on that in my thoughts. I also want to put out a video on my, my honest review of the game so far, because I feel like I have been very supportive of the game while also being very critical of certain parts of the game. And I, I feel like you guys would like to know exactly how I feel about the game because my thought process varies within a video. Sometimes I'm like, oh god, I hate this mechanic. And other times it's, oh boy, I absolutely love this. That was a ton of fun. Yada, yada, yada. So, you know, I'm kind of a roller coaster, but I think just giving a, a video of my honest take would really solidify where I'm at with the game and like what things I would like to see in the future that are reasonable and maybe some things that I would like to see in the game that are kind of like pushing the limit. But I, I think as a developer, sometimes you have to push the limit. But that is it for today's episode. Greatly appreciate you guys. Um, we are still working on the Ultimate General American Revolution campaign. It's just been a little bit of a slog trying to get as much good footage for you as possible because the frontier, to be honest, is a little bit boring. And then it's winter time and not a lot happens during the winter. So I'm trying to get you guys exciting footage as opposed to, you know, kind of same old, same old. And then, of course, American General Civil War is still going. And I'm really thinking about starting a Classified 44 campaign. I think that game looks like a lot of fun and I think you guys would enjoy that. So that is it for today's episode. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of that YouTube jazz. Greatly appreciate it. Um, just as FYI, today's my birthday. So... I would really love those like and subscribe uh, subscribes and uh, you know uh, a comment is always appreciated as always guys until next time.